Solana Explorers, what are they and how do we use them? Here I am at soulscan.io. This is my preferred Solana Explorer. And what does an Explorer allow you to do? I'll show you by copying my address in my Phantom Wallet. Copy it here, and I'll come here, paste the address, and click search. This shows me in a human readable format all of the information regarding my address that's happened on the Solana blockchain. And we can look at any transaction that's happened, any of them, anybody's public address, anything on the Solana blockchain. So the Explorer allows us to see transparently what's happening on the blockchain. Here's a quick example. First part is this signature. This is also called a transaction ID. Next, we have the block that the transaction was a part of. I've already covered what a block is, but just as a reminder, a block is a group of transactions with record data that's added to the blockchain and linked to the previous group of transactions. Then we have the timestamp on when it happened. If we click on it, it will convert it to local time. The result here showed that it was a successful transaction. The signer is who paid for the fee in order for this to happen. Here is a fee on the blockchain, so well and truly less than a cent. And what actually happened? There was a transfer from this wallet to this wallet, which is my wallet, for this one item. We can also click on TX map, so transaction map, and we can see what exactly happened. This, by the way, is just a scam token. I'll show you it in my wallet. See this? Just a scam token. And just quickly, whenever you see them, if you're certain they're scams, just click burn token, click on this, and burn. You even get a little bit of Solana. Close it, and it's no longer in your wallet. So that's an example of what an Explorer does. And then let's practice using the Explorer. This is the official Solana Explorer. It's significantly harder to read, but I'll show you as an example. We'll paste in my wallet, and we'll click on the account. We can see the UI is not as easy to read. However, some people, such as developers, prefer to use this Explorer because it gives a lot of data. Next, we have X-Ray. Paste in my address and click Go. This shows everything in a nice UI, but it can make things a little bit confusing. It does show compressed NFTs really nicely though, which is really good. If we click on this, we can see that we received this, but compressed NFTs are done a little bit differently. I quite like X-Ray. Then this is Solana Beach. Paste in my address, and this is it here. We can have a look at our portfolio or SPL tokens. I have done SPL token transactions, but it doesn't show up wonderfully in Solana Beach. The thing I love about Solana Beach relates to staking your Solana. You can clearly see when the epoch is gonna end. You can also see the validators working around the network. I don't use Solana Beach very often. Next, we have Solana.fm. Let's have a look at this account. This has some nice features, like we can see our net worth in Seoul, as well as USD, all the assets in our account, our transfers, exactly what's happening, our token transfers, our NFT transfers. It doesn't show the compressed NFTs here though. And the sole balance changes. The thing I love about this is it shows the price and the transactions per second, but also the true transactions per second. The network is doing 4,420 transactions per second, but over 4,000 of those relate to the validators communicating with one another. The actual true TPS is 255. Now let's work out some of the basic things. Let's go into my phantom wallet and go to my recent transactions. We've already covered this. I received the scam NFT and then I burnt it. Let's have a look at a simple transaction like this one. Click on it, scroll on down and click view on SoulScan. This opens up a window. It shows me as a signer. So this is my address, the fee and the token transfer. So transfer from this wallet to this wallet for 200 USDC. If we go to Soul Balance Change, we can see a very small amount of Solana left this account and went into this account. This is known as a token account and it's owned by this address. This address, 6NCQ, let's have a look. Let's see if it's one of my other addresses. To the hamburger menu, it's not this address, it's this address. So this address apparently receives some USDC. There's no USDC here at the moment, but let's click on this and let's scroll on down and let's see if we received 200 USDC. Here it is, about eight days ago, 200 USDC. You can see the Solana balance of 0.002 Sol. What is this? This is known as rent reserve and every SBL token has it. You pay it once to open the account. So as an example with Ethereum, we've paid 0.002 Sol to open the account. Same with this one. In the future, if I want to, I can close this account and get back the small amount of Solana. If we had 100 different tokens, we would have 100 times this amount here, so 0.2 Sol. So coming back to the original transaction, we can see why the Solana's done that, and we also know it's only done once. 
So if I send the USDC into this address again from any other address, I will not have to pay this fee again. Now let's have a look at the token balance change. This is very easy to follow. I'm sure you've guessed it. We took 200 USDC out of this address here and we put it into this address here. So this transaction is easy to understand. Let's show a slightly more difficult one. Maybe this one, a swap on Jupiter. Let's click on that and view on SolScan. Here we can see the signer and what they did. They interacted with the program, Jupiter Aggregator V2 version 2 and a whole host of things that happened. Back to Sol Balance Change, same thing happened here, a little bit of Solana, created the account. There's also a little bit extra here that's gone and that went to the transaction fee. And now Token Balance Change. Our USDC decreased this address with over $1.1 million worth of USDC which would be a DeFi liquidity pool, it increased by 50 USDC. And then the same liquidity pool with $1.3 million worth of UXD stablecoin decreased by $50.01. And then finally, this ended up here, which of course is in my address. So that's what the swap looks like. And I imagine you pretty much only ever use Jupiter, either by going into Phantom and using the swap function right here, or by going directly to Jupiter, like here, maybe getting some bonk or something like that. So that's that transaction. Let's now have a look at stake. We can look at our recent transactions here and just click on one. We'll just click on the address, go to SolScan, paste it in and check out your address. Here we can see our stake here, 2.99 Sol. We've got stake accounts down here. We have two of them delegated and Sol transfers. We can see 5.1 Sol came into the account and then transactions here. Most, if not all of these, will relate to staking. Why, I hear you ask? Simply because I separate my wallets into different functions. It keeps them organized, and I suggest you do the same. Now the Phantom UI is normally spot on. So as an example, we can click on this here, withdraw stake, and go and view it on SolScan, and we can see the transaction here. The signer, the Sol balance change, and the token balance change. What we're looking for in the sole balance change, if it relates to staking, is an interaction with the staking program, which is just this, stake, a series of ones. We can also go to overview, of course, and scroll on down, and we can see one of the instructions, which says stake withdraw. But getting into instructions is something we'll cover in the intermediate course. Now let's have a look at Magic Eden. We'll go to activity, and we'll have a look at a recent DGN Ape sale. So this one, part of the overalls gang. We've got a couple of different things that we can see, but let's just click on it. And here we can see the ape. We'll scroll on down. And four hours ago, it was sold. So we can click on this link here. Just click here. And this takes us to Solana.fm. We've got a breakdown of what happened with the Solana and the NFT. And then we've got something that's a little bit confusing for this video, but it gives all the data here if you like data. What might be easier though, is just coming up to the top here and just clicking on the transaction ID or the signature, copying it, then back to SolScan and just paste in that transaction ID and click on it. This interacted with the program HadeSwap. It transferred from this address to this address for one DGN Ape and 31.7 Sol was the selling price. We can see the Sol balance change in here, of course, and the token balance change here. One NFT leaving here and going to this owner. In this account, we should be able to click on token accounts and maybe we can search for DAPE. However, I do have issues with the UI sometimes, but if I click on SPL transfers, I can see the DGN Ape actually came into the address and then was moved shortly after. We can click on the token and we can see who has it now. This address here, which will also match under holders. BW. Now what about Tensor? How do we see a transaction? It's done exactly the same way. Let's have a look at Mad Lads. Over here, we've got the activity. If you can't see it here, just click on this toggle. We can see this was a recent buy. We can click on it and we can see the data here. Let's click on the activity. When you see something like this, it normally means that a bot is trying to do something, trying to make a little bit of profit. So if we clicked on the transaction, we can just see that it's been listed on Magic Eden for 63.09 sold. So that's an overview of how to use the Solana Block Explorer. It's just an intro, there's always plenty to learn, but you're always welcome to go to soulscan.io, plug in some addresses, have a play, and get more familiar. Imagine the future if we had governments, companies, etc., that put their transactions on a public ledger so that anybody could inspect them. That transparency would make people a lot more accountable. In our next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can buy your own Solana domain name. So go watch that now. Stay curious, catch you in the next video.